Hello students, I welcome you all in the course of Accounting and Finance of Commonwealth of Learning MBA MPA program. Before we proceed with our course, let me explain you that the course of Accounting and Finance can be divided into three areas. First is of the Financial Accounting, second is of the Management Accounting and third deal with the Financial Management. Our first lecture is from the first area, which is financial accounting. The learning objectives of our this lecture are to have an introduction of the accounting, to learn what is financial transaction and its types, documentation of financial transaction, to understand the functions of accounting, to enlist the users and uses of accounting information, to understand different types of organization and in the last to understand the accounting framework. To meet our these learning objectives, we learn here definition of accounting, definition of financial transaction, types of transactions, source document and its types, introduction to accounting functions, users and uses of accounting information, types of business entities and organizations. And in the last, we will discuss the accounting framework. We begin our discussion with the definition of accounting, which will explain what is accounting. Accounting is the systematic classification, summarizing, recording and reporting of financial transaction of a business under a set of rules and regulations. You can also say that the accounting is a business language understood globally. Now we discuss all the underlined items and terms in this definition one by one. First of all, we explain what is a financial transaction. Any dealing between two businesses involves the money or valuable thing is called financial transaction. Payment of utility bills payment of salaries to workers and staff and purchase of goods in exchange of money are the examples of financial transactions. Occurrence of a financial transaction is an event which triggers the whole process of accounting and changes the financial position or financial performance of a business. Going into more detail, we'll look here into the types of financial transaction. There are three types of financial transactions, cash transaction, credit transaction and barter transaction. First comes first, what is the cash transaction? It is a transaction in which the money is paid at the same time when the goods are purchased or services are rendered. For example, on paying rupees 35,000 in cash, Mr. Abbas purchased a computer. Now we have a look on credit transaction. It is a transaction in which the goods are purchased, but payment is delayed to a future date. For example, a trader purchased goods from a supplier worth rupees 25,000 and promised to pay him after one week. At the last, we discuss barter transaction. It is a transaction in which the goods are exchanged for goods or services are exchanged for services. This exchange between goods or services made between two different types or two different natures of goods and services. For example, a trader gives 10 kilogram of wheat in exchange of 8 kilogram of rice. 
all these three are the types of financial transactions as these met the criteria as per definition of financial transaction. As we have read that the occurrence of a financial transaction is an event which triggers the whole process of accounting. Therefore, this event has to be documented before further accounting process. The occurrence of a financial transaction is documented through preparation of source documents. Now we discuss here what is a source document. Source document is the proof of happening of a transaction and for each nature of transaction a specific type of source document shall be prepared. For example, sales invoice shall be the source document for sales transaction while purchase invoice shall be the source document for purchase transaction. On the other end, check bank deposit in slips shall be the source document for bank transactions. Similarly, receipts for cash paid and received serve the purpose of source document for all types of cash transactions. The relationship between source document and other accounting record and processing shall be discussed later on in detail. Now we have an overview of the functions of accounting or you can say these are the steps to be adopted to process a financial transaction for accounting purposes. There are four functions or steps of accounting as indicated by its definition and these are classification, summarizing, recording and reporting. Classification is the first step. In this step, we classify the items involved in a transaction into income, expense, assets, liabilities or capital. It is important to remember here that the classification of item is dependent on the nature of item for that particular business. Similarly, we also classify the accounts to be involved in a transaction However, the classification of item and its respective account in a transaction shall always be same. In our upcoming lectures, we will discuss in detail with examples all these classifications income, expense, assets, liabilities or capital. The second step is summarizing. In this step, despite of narrative recording of a transaction, we use the double entry rules, double entry system and account format to summarize the transaction detail. Double entry rules system and account format will be discussed in next lecture. Using the summarizing technique, we record the transaction in respective books of accounts, sub ledgers and general ledgers. This is the third step which is called recording or bookkeeping. Remember that each book of account is used to record a specific type of transaction. For example, cash transactions are recorded in cash day book, types of books of accounts and their respective transactions will be discussed later on. Once the transaction are recorded, the fourth step comes which is reporting. In this, the financial reports are prepared from the trial balance like profit and loss account, balance sheet and cash flow statements. These financial reports are then used to analyze the financial performance and financial position of a business and to make financial decisions through analysis techniques like horizontal analysis, vertical analysis, and ratio analysis. This is an aspect of financial management which is based on the financial reports. Now we discuss the users and uses of accounting information. The users of accounting information can be divided into two categories internal users 
and external users. Internal users means the users from or within the organization or business and may include the owners of the business, managers and other employees. The external users are the potential investors, regulatory authorities and bodies, bankers, suppliers and competitors. Internal as well as external users use the same information for their own specific purpose or need. The internal users use the accounting information for financial goal setting, budgeting, financial decision making, cost controlling, in analysis of current financial position and to make future financial forecast. However, the external users as per their need use the accounting information to assess the profitability of the business, to estimate the return on investment for valuation of a business, to verify the tax liability, to assess the business continuity, to evaluate its financial strength or to check the credit worthiness of a business and also to evaluate the business financial performance. The information may be the same but the purpose for which it is used can be different. For example, profit and loss account is a statement which can be used by the owners of business to evaluate the financial performance of a business for a period. But at the same time, the same report can be used by the tax authorities to identify the tax liability of the business. Now we discuss the types of business. Type of business is a factor which extensively affects the accounting practices adopted by the organization. Therefore, we must have an understanding with the different types of business entities or organizations. Depending on the prime objectives of any organization, there are two types of organization. First, the profit oriented organizations and second, non-profit oriented organizations. As represented by their name, profit oriented organizations are the organizations and businesses with the prime objective to earn profit for their owners. However, on the other end, the non-profit oriented organizations are the organizations with prime objective to work for the welfare of a specific group, for welfare of general public or to promote any non-commercial activity, for example, any sport activity, the education, health, and others non-commercial activities. Profit oriented organizations can be in the form of sole proprietor, partnership and company. Now we will learn what is the sole proprietor. Sole proprietor is a business owned and managed by a single person. Then we answer what is a partnership. Partnership is a business owned and managed by more than single person but not more than 20%. It means that the total number of partners in a single partnership cannot be more than 20. Now at the last we will discuss what is a company. Company is a business which is registered under the company's ordinance 1984 and has a separate legal status. By definition one can interpret that if more than 20 persons want to do business jointly, they have to form a company. However, non-profit oriented organizations can be in the form of non-government organizations abbreviated as NGOs, trusts and societies. At the last of today's lecture, we will understand the accounting framework. First, we learn the definition of accounting framework. Accounting framework is a set of rules and regulations that govern the accounting practices of an organization or business. Now we discuss what are the elements of accounting framework and their application on different types of organizations. 
accounting framework consists of five elements. The first and most basic is generally accepted accounting principles, which is abbreviated as GAAP. These are the principles and accounting practices which are evolved over the time. These principles are unanimously followed and understood globally. As far as its application is concerned, irrespective of the nature of business and its legal status, it has to be followed by all types of organizations. Second element is the industry practices. These are the accounting practices and principles evolved to cater the specific needs of a particular industry. Its application is purely dependent on the nature of business. For example, if an industry practices concerned with the retailers, then only retailers have to follow that practice and not the manufacturers. International accounting standards is the third element these are the standard accounting procedures and rules on the particular accounting area defined by the International Accounting Standard Board. It is compulsory for all companies to follow the requirements of international accounting standards. For other organizations, it is optional. Fourth element of accounting framework is the law of incorporation. The law of incorporation is the law under which a business is formed and registered. Therefore, the application of this element on any organization is purely dependent on the legal status of that organization. For example, only companies have to follow the accounting requirements set by the company's ordinance 1984, but not the partnerships and sole proprietors. The last one is local regulatory requirements. These are the industry specific requirements as determined by the regulatory bodies for specific organization. For example, any regulatory requirement set for banks shall only be followed by the banks. The accounting practices and principles of a business can be a combination of all these elements depending on the legal status and nature of business of an organization. The accounting framework consists of local as well as international elements. However, if there is any clash of the accounting practices and principles between the local requirements and international requirements, the local will supersede and prevail and the organization shall follow the local requirements in its accounting practices. Our focus will remain on the gap as our course contents are mostly related to it. Now before finishing our today's lecture, we take an overview of what we have learned so far. First of all, we learned the definition of accounting, then we learned the financial transaction and take some examples. After this, we study the types of financial transaction, which can be the cash transaction, credit transaction, and barter transaction. After this, we studied the source document and its types for specific financial transactions. Moving further, we discussed the steps and functions of accounting, which are classification, summarizing, recording, and reporting. The analysis step or phase is more concerned with the financial management and corporate finance, but it is based on the accounting information and reports. Then we studied the phase analysis of financial reports, which is a concept of corporate finance, but based on the accounting information. After this, we discuss the users of accounting information which are internal and external users and their respective use of accounting information. Then we studied the types of business entities, profit oriented and non-profit oriented businesses and different forms of business under each type. At the last of today's lecture, we learned the accounting framework, which is the set of rules
govern the accounting practices and consist of five elements gap industry practices international accounting standards law of incorporation and regulatory requirements we also studied their application for businesses that's all for today's lecture i hope that you will find this lecture helpful to get an understanding of accounting and finance we will meet in next lecture with more interesting topics till that time take care and goodbye